Hey guys, good afternoon. It is 1.50 p.m. New York time on Friday, May 8th, 2020. Hope everybody had a good week. Um, back again with another uh, video on potentially using um, uh, an indicator that comes in MT4 and real simple strategy. And again, guys, um, you know, none of these indicators are perfect. No indicator is perfect. And I don't rely strictly on indicators. Um, as I've said in many of my other videos, I do follow the fundamentals and what's going on in the, you know, kind of the macroeconomic picture. I keep an eye on the news calendar. I understand the basic underlying fundamentals of each currency uh, as, you know, like their central bank policy and such. So I think all that's important. Uh, but technical strategies are just as important. Um, I don't think you can survive just purely on technicals, and I don't think you can survive purely on fundamentals. I think you need a combination of both. As I also mentioned, um, I'm an, uh, I like using Elliott Wave. Again, I don't use it exclusively, but I've studied Elliott Wave, and um, I can pick out Elliott Wave patterns pretty easily on charts, and I will use those as guides, especially for entries and exits, uh, particularly for, well, I guess for entries too, like at the end of a correction or a pullback, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and for exits, um, you know, when I see a pattern complete, um, especially if it's very textbook, I'm going to, I'm going to use that over any, any, whatever any indicator says. So just remember guys, <clears throat> all this is just designed to be, to help you, um, just um, get some ideas. So so the one I'm going to talk about today is one that, honestly, I never hear anybody talking about. Um, um, and it is a common indicator that's in your MT4, MT5 platform in, under your trend indicators. Um, and it's probably in TradingView. It's probably in every platform. Um, so it's a, it's a readily available. You shouldn't even have to go out and look for it. Um, and it's called the envelope indicator. Um, and if you're looking for it, you just go to your indicator file and you go to trend and it's right here. It's envelopes. Now I'm going to open this, bring it back over here. Um, the parameters when I opened it is 14, 0, and this was simple. I changed it to exponential because it gives more weighting to more recent prices than past pricing. Um, but everything else I left the same. I le left it at a 14 period and I left the shifting at 0. And you can play around with it, but honestly I think this is the best setup. Um, and the only change I would make is to change this from simple to exponential. Um, but you can play around with these smooth and linear weighted, see what those do. Um, so those are the settings, 14, 0, exponential. And then uh, I changed the colors a little bit just because um, um, I use red and green candles. So the, the default settings were a dark blue and a red. So I don't like the dark blue because I use a black background. It's kind of hard to see it. And I don't like using the red because I use red bear candles. So it, the, the line sometimes gets lost because the, this this line on the inside was the red line and against all the red candles it's hard to see it and the dark blue on the black background um, wasn't very good so I changed it to a little lighter blue and I changed it to the yellow I'm still playing around with colors but you know obviously that doesn't matter do whatever you like so um, so when you put it on your chart this is what it looks like it basically looks like a moving average and, and if you guys want to know basically how to use some of these if you just google it so there's a web this there's this broker admiral markets i don't this is not my broker but they have a lot of good um um education free education things on their website and if you go under education um you can actually uh look up um you can actually look these things up on their website and um find so it, here's a um i, I looked up envelopes indicator and, the, and you know it's, and again, it takes you about 13 minutes to read this whole page. It's basically you just scroll. It tells you everything from how to load it to how to change the default settings. And then it runs through basically how it's calculated and how to use it. Their suggestion how to use it, the, the good and the bad things about it. So, you know, spend some time and, and read it. This, it'll take you a few minutes to read this, but you'll get a really good idea of about what the indicator is, how it's calculated, uh, what its plus and minuses are, uh, etc. And, uh, you know, they talk about, you know, moving this period to 200. I left it at 14. If you, if you move it to 200, it's basically just going to look like a 200-day moving average, and I didn't find that useful at all. This is really for somebody that uh, 
wants to trade very infrequently, maybe you trade on a higher time frame and you're just going to stick with a trend as long as it's over this. In that case, you might as well just use like a, a 200 period moving average. So I didn't agree with this. Um, I left it at 14, which is how it defaults. Um, but if you change it to 200, you'll see what I mean. And uh, changing the shift really is not good either. It totally changes the way it looks, at least for how I use it. So again, I left it at 14, 0, and I just changed this to exponential. Well, see, those, so the only change I really made is exponential because it defaults to 14 and 0. But anyways, this is a good page just to go and just read, you know, what is this indicator showing you? How is it calculated? It, and, uh, you know, some suggestions of how to use it uh, in a strategy, um, pitfalls, you know, plus and minuses, et cetera, et cetera. So do that too, guys. Uh, you know, you can just Google envelope indicator. You'll find all kinds. Admiral Markets will come up for sure. In fact, when I Googled it, here it is, envelope indicator. It was the first one here, Admiral Markets. And you're going to find... Uh, other, the other site that usually comes up is uh, Investopedia. That's another one that'll come up. These two are the two more common ones that tell you um, how to use it. But I, I like I do like Admiral's um, page. Um, so, anyways, uh, so you know, take a read about you know what the indicator is. You don't have to be an expert, and you don't have to know how it's coded and all that. But it's good to know how it's calculated, what it's actually showing you, because it'll help you understand how to. If you're going to make an adjustment to it, what you're actually changing, and it'll just help you, you know, manage your expectations about, you know, what it's going to show you. And basically, you know, it, it helps you find key levels, and it's it's kind of like a moving average breakout, uh, moving average crossover. It's similar to that, but not exactly. Um, it's it's kind of like a, a combination of, um, you know, uh, uh, Bollinger bands and, uh, you know. Uh, channels and and moving average crossover so it's kind of different in that respect it's not it's not a straight up you know moving average uh type indicator um and versus the alligator indicator which i've done a video on the alligator which i really like the alligator it's only two lines versus three so it's a little cleaner on your charts doesn't you know cause as much clutter on your main chart and i do like to keep this as clean and simple as possible but essentially guys you just use it kind of like a crossover, and I find it really works the best on the the one and four hour charts. And you can use it on the daily chart; it's going to really peg. So the daily is fine. You notice if you go down to a low time frames, this is what it starts looking like. This is a fifteen minute, and now it starts looking kind of like Bollinger bands. Um, still not bad, but you can see it's not really a moving average indicator. Because if this was a moving average, you know, you know how it would look. These these two moving averages would both be over the price in a downtrend. And now you can see it actually, it's actually, quote, enveloping the price. But you really only see this on the short time frames. Um, and that's why I think um, they suggest, you know, changing the settings. Because on the higher time frames, it looks much more like a moving average indicator. So here it is on the one hour. And here are the two lines. And you can see it just follows the trend down. And then there's a crossover. Price breaks through. And then it goes up. And then the, now the price, the indicator is underneath the price on an uptrend. But again, on a short time frame, you can see it envelopes the price. And it does follow the price. It does repaint uh, to follow the price. Okay, so it depends what time frame you're going to use it on. If you're going to use it on a short time frame, you're basically just trading inside of the envelope. And when it breaks, um, when the price breaks through, in this case, like, see, we were going up, 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 up. And then finally, we had this candle broke below, and now it started heading down. So this would be obviously a sell signal right here to go short. You get a close underneath the envelope, and then you take it short, and then back here you get a long again, and it goes back up. Okay. So let's go back to a, the longer time frame. Uh, the other way that you, you know confirmation to maybe try to use this is using divergence. Okay. So uh, I'm a big believer in divergence when price uh, reaches um, a new high or low in a particular move. And so uh, if we look. Uh, let me see here. Um, so right here is actually not a good divergence setup right here because you see the oscillate. This is that zero lag MACD. Um, it actually made a new low and price made a new low. So this is not really a good one. So um, although it did reverse right after that. But over here, we do have one. So you can see price came down. You make this new low right here, but look at the oscillator. 
that this oscillator has had been moving back up for quite a while so that's that's a warning sign again divergence doesn't mean price is going to imminently reverse it's just a warning sign that 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 momentum of that move is you know um maybe running out of steam okay so um so basically this is how you use it so in this case on this one hour chart you can see price going up now you do you are going to get like anything else you're going to get some false signals so right here we had the price break below here okay and um you know s s somebody may have gone short right here then you would have gotten stopped out and so um but this is where you have to use you know some of your other visual skills and to me as an Elliott wave trader, th this looks like a classic pullback right here. On a lower time frame, this would probably be like an ABC pattern, and it keeps going. Um, and uh, you know, so to me, this is this is questionable. Um, but this is where you you know, not every indicator is going to be right. And now maybe if you adjust the indicator, maybe adjust the shift on this, you'd push this line down a little bit, so it would maybe pick this up. But you don't want to do that too much because for the most part, it's going to be pretty good. Um, so right here, we get up here and then uh, price makes a new high and then it breaks and you get this close right here. The envelope turns back down and you can see there's divergence here too. You make this new high and you can see the divergence down here. Okay. And so, and then it goes back long right here price and now you, you got two entry points you can make if if you want to be more aggressive as soon as you get a close after following a downtrend as soon as you get a close over the yellow line which is the outer band um, you the outer envelope you could take a long position right here say at the close of this candle put your stop down here and let it go if you want to be more aggressive uh, more conservative you can wait until it breaks the inner line the blue line so maybe right here and then still put you you're going to have a, maybe potentially a bigger stop loss but you have more of a uh, shot that this is actually going to go up okay now um, this is probably not a really great pair to show you because you can see there's a lot of whip sawing in here right and that's because from if you go out to the four hour chart let me just put a couple of lines on here you go out to a four hour chart you can see this area in here all this you know whip sawing around um, so you know it, it's always better in trending markets um, but I think um, you know this is definitely um, something to something to look at um, so here we are this here's the Canadian yen on the hourly chart again we had this big downtrend we had divergence right here right price makes a new low but the oscillator does not and then we had this crossover this is a really nice one right here right price comes back up more aggressive you could enter right here at the close above the yellow line uh, more conservatively you wait till it breaks the blue line put your stop below the swing and then let it go okay and like anything else when the bands and the price is moving sideways I mean you just you can kind of visually see this right this is a consolidation area the bands are kind of moving sideways right they're, they're not really sloping one way or another the kind of price is kind of chopping around there's no trade here this is a transitional area and you know it could transition and go up in this case it was a pull back on the downtrend and then it kept going so you want to avoid these sideways areas basically what well, you want to wait for a crossover now in this case it kept going down so here's would have been your entry right now I guess you know if you were really aggressive and you were already in this short maybe your stop was way up here and you never exited this trade but let's say you, you miss this you miss this part of it you come to your charts and you notice this consolidation area You're like okay well let me watch this we we had a downtrend now we're moving sideways this probably would have been your entry right here this red candle breaks out of the envelope you, you go short here at the close put your stop maybe up here above this swing and then you know price did retrace a little bit and then it came down this was short-lived we did have divergence and price did reverse back up again you can also use the 200 EMA as I've talked about in other videos to, as a if you want to be really conservative and use this as a filter and say as long as price is below the 200 I'm only looking for shorts when it's above the 200 um, I'm only looking for longs that's completely your choice um, sometimes I do sometimes I don't but um, you know in, in this case right here you know we had the you know we had price break down right here well technically I wouldn't have 
if you were following that rule, you wouldn't have taken this short because price was still above the 200 even at the close here. But it turned out to be a good trade. So that's why, you know, just use the crossover and use, you know, divergence and try to, you know, use other indicators or other visual skills to figure out whether it's a good trade or not. I mean, there's risk in everything. No trade's going to, not every trade's going to work. You're gonna, definitely going to have losers. You're going to have false signals. Um, that's why I said you could, you know, maybe you could play around with the settings a little bit and see if, um, you know, th there's, there's better, you know, settings. But I, I think, you know, with this shift here, let me just do this while we're talking. I'm just doing this live time, guys. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this shift. And I'm going to shift this out five periods. And let's see what happens. I don't think I'm going to like. So, so you can see what happens. I just shifted this, this, this line out five periods. Okay. And it didn't really make all that much difference. I, I was looking kind of like right here. I was looking to see maybe if the envelope would change. And maybe pick up this area because this you know this would have been a false breakout to the downside okay um but you know it it, it didn't work out so if you had gone short right here you would have been stopped out right so um so that's what i'm saying guys it's not going to be a perfect thing and that's why you have to use uh other visual skills or other indicators uh let me change it a little bit more just for a laugh let's change it to 10. Okay, and you can see it does it doesn't really help. All it does is shift in these consolidation areas. It's not going to help you. It will help you maybe during the trend to 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 pick up this market and give you a little bit more breathing room uh, during the trend. You can see it pushes this yellow line further to the right. So maybe it gives you more breathing room during the trend. But in these consolidation zones, which is usually where people get into trouble, it's not going to shifting the it's not going to really help you. You see what I'm saying? If I change this back to zero, which is the default setting, okay, the, the envelope's pretty good at, at, at containing price. So I don't really see any advantage of shifting it, you know, but that's, you know, you can play around with it and see if something works for you. So again, guys, pretty simple indicator. Again, on the short time frames, it's going to, the upper band is going to hug the, 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 um, the blue line is going to hug the uh, one side of the price and the yellow line is going to hug the other side and basically envelopes again kind of like a bollinger band type thing when you go to the one hour four hour daily it's going to look more like a moving average type system so that's why it's really kind of cool because you know if you're if you're a, a short uh, if you like sh trading the short time frames this is a nice little maybe scalping indicator if you like trading, just you're just a trend trader or a breakout trader on the longer time frames, the hourly and up, you can just use it kind of like a di divergence moving average crossover. You know, just use a, any oscillator. This is the zero lag MACD that I was talking about, but you can use the regular MACD. You could probably use RSI, uh, um, you know, CCI, commodity channel index, um, stochastics, which I don't like, but you could probably use any oscillator in here to show you the divergence. So. Um, so I'm going to uh, play around with this, guys. It's not an indicator that I've used much, but uh, I'm going to throw this in. A, I made a template for this, and I'm going to try it out. Obviously, uh, the market's pretty much done for the week this week. Um, it's Friday afternoon. But uh, next week, I may give it a go and see uh, what it looks like uh, in real time. Maybe I'll try trading it. Um, I'll probably go through and, uh, um, you know, uh, probably on Sunday, I'll probably... Uh, go and look at, um, you know, go through my charts and, and look for some potential um, crossover areas and, and just write them down and see what happens. Here's an L1 right here. This is the Euro Canadian on the hourly chart. So again, we had price come down here, then we had clear divergence, right? Again, I'll draw it out, right? Price is coming down, makes a new low, but look at the indicator, all right? The indicator is diverging. And then we had this rollover right here, Okay, you could have gone long really right right around here. Price rolls over, you get across above this uh, the blue line. Um, if you really want to be aggressive, you could have gone long right in here, maybe right at the close of this, as soon as you get a close above the yellow line. Um, but you can see what happens if you go long on the yellow line. See, you know, you had that in here too. So really, guys, I would say 
wait until it crosses above the blue line. You get a close above the blue line because you can see on pullbacks, you're going to get a close above here, but you know, you certainly didn't want to go long right here. So let me just take that back then. So just wait until it crosses the, um, the blue line on an uptrend or on a downtrend when it closes below the yellow line. That way there, you, um, you know, make sure that you're, you know, you're catching, um, you know, you're catching, um, the, the, the safest trade, you know, you'll leave a few pips on the trade on the table, but it'll filter out some of these things. And, um, you know, you won't get as many false, false signals. Again, uh, in this case, you go long and then put your stop below the swing here. Pretty simple. Give it a little breathing room, you know, maybe not right at these lows, maybe 10 pips away, give it a little breathing room and then, you know, let it go and see what happens. And again, if you use the 200 EMA, you wouldn't have taken this trade because prices still be below. But, um, you know, that's why this 200 EMA and this trading strategy may not be um, as important as it is maybe in some of the other ones. I still like having it on the chart, though. Anyways, so, you know, if I don't use it, I just ignore it. Um, and you can see, like, worked really well on the daily chart. Again, price came down. Okay. Um, and then it rolled back over. Now, you don't really see too much divergence here, right? The oscillator did basically make a new low on this low. So that's why I said on the one to four hour chart, it seems to be a little bit better because it shows the divergence. You didn't really see the divergence here on the daily chart. It, the oscillator me made a new low, but you can see clearly, you know, three or four days later, it went up and closed above and then it just shot right up. Okay. So I think the divergence is better on, on the shorter time frames. Probably anything under the four hour, you'll be better with divergence. On the longer time frames, the daily, you're basically just looking for these crossovers. And when you get price crossing below, um, and again, you got another consult. This is another danger area right here, right? All this whipsawing going on right here. You try to buy this, right? Price breaks up, right? You buy it. Oh, you get stopped out. Price breaks up, you know. Maybe you don't get stopped out, but you don't really go too far. And, you know, it wasn't until it broke here. So this is, again, guys, where you have to just be careful in these consolidation zones, which is where all these breakout strategies always kill people because people are trying to pick tops and bottoms. And, you know, you get this whipsawing. But you can see, you know, the, the indicator is kind of just moving sideways, right? So you want to wait and, you know... Um, but do you necessarily want to wait for it to break below here? Well, you could, but obviously you left a lot of pips on the deal. If you if you wait for this down move to break below these lows, you, you see how much you're leaving on the table. You only are getting this little bit instead of all this. Instead of maybe from here, you're getting it down here, and then it quickly reverse back up. So you do have to be careful, and this is why you have to be able to use other uh, visual skills to know whether something is the time to get in or not. Okay? So, but sideways consolidating markets are always the killer. Now, this is a daily chart. Maybe you could have gone down to the to a shorter time frame, and you know done really well with this. You know, if we take this box, um, let's see. Here it is. Here's that box that I drew on the one-hour chart. There's some nice little trends in here, right? So right here. I mean, you could have gone long here, and you know, pick this up, pick this up right here. This is you know. 190 pips so it's not to say you can't trade these ranges but you have to be able to be comfortable dropping to a shorter time frame and just understand that you know if the if the upper time frames are consolidating that these these are risky trades you know because the market's very erratic and it can this was a good one but you know if you had done something in here maybe not so good it's just really crappy right here really bad right in here you know right in here so that's why I'm saying if, if you're seeing consolidating markets, um, you know, it's not to say you can't trade it, but you got to go down to a much shorter time frame and play around with it. But again, I think this indicator can help find you trades even within choppy markets. You just have to pick the right time frame to look at it. I prefer to not use the real short time frames, but you, you definitely can. So uh, I will leave it there, guys. This is the envelope indicator. Again, uh, it, it's it's um, it's good for a trend following. It's good for breakouts. It's good, kind of like a moving average um, crossover. And on shorter time frames, it it's it acts more like um, 
again it envelopes the price acts more like kind of like bollinger bands just you know um, keeps price inside of there and you're just looking for breakouts use it with other uh, indicators or the null at least one indicator like some kind of oscillator to help you look for divergence especially at extreme highs and lows this is where divergence is going to play in not necessarily during a trending market but when you hit an uh, a new high or a new low that's when I'm going to start paying attention to divergence um, and you know just to know if I'm in a trade uh, to be careful and, and if I'm thinking about getting into one I'll start looking once I see the divergence so all right so uh, guys uh, if you're just finding the channel for the first time as always lower right hand corner click that subscribe icon on the screen or below the video hit the little bell notification so you notify as soon as I post a new video leave comments or questions below share the video if, if there's any if you have any suggestions questions on this or anything else feel free to drop it in there new content anything you want to hear uh, feel free to uh, throw it in there and I'll be happy to answer so um, I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend and um, probably on Sunday I'll sit and go through my charts um, and I probably will use this indicator and look for some potential setup so if I if I can come up with anything decent uh, maybe I'll make an, uh, another video about you know things to look for using this indicator uh, towards the beginning of the week next week all right guys take care again have a great weekend we'll talk to you soon